Welcome to Norgi Ski Club. This is one of the coolest locations in McHenry County. Why? Because we have this in the background, a long distance ski hill for jumping. We got a couple of skiers up there right now. We're going to show you how it's done. This is a ski club that's been in existence since 1905. We got one coming here. That was two of our advanced jumpers uh, practicing for today. Uh, we practice year-round here at Norgi. Uh, we are uh, the only ski jumping facility in Illinois. And they do this year-round by wetting down the hills. This is typically a winter sport. And the winter time is really when the kids really like to jump because they pick up more speed. Even though you can see them coming down the hill here, uh, coming down pretty fast during the winter, they'll reach top speeds of 55 miles and faster. Uh, as they try to time their jump, to a couple hundredths of a second right at that instant to time perfectly to get as much air as possible, to get as much flight as possible, and land with style. Uh, these guys do an amazing job out here. Uh, we've got a couple of advanced jumpers here sitting watching off to the side. Um, and after uh, they jump here, we'll cart them back up. Uh, they'll do some more jumping to show you guys how it's done. This is uh, our 70-meter hill. And that Norgi here, if people are interested in jumping, we have multiple hills. Most people don't, don't start ever jumping the 70-meter hill. And everyone asks, well, how do we get started on this? And we have hills starting at 5 meters, 10 meters, 25 meters. We then have a 45-meter, and this is our 70. So as kids start to jump, they'll start on that 5-meter hill, which is kind of basically jumping off the end of your driveway maybe and uh, getting down the technique working on their in run, uh, their landing, um, so that as they move up, uh, they can progress on their skills and work on their confidence. What is the youngest jumper? Uh, the youngest jumpers are usually around five years old. Uh, that's most of the time uh, when kids get into it. Um, you can certainly start later, uh, but like any sport, if you really want to be good at it, uh, that experience at a younger age does help. Um, my son started when he was in sixth grade, so when he was 11, uh, and has done pretty well. He's on the advanced team right now, um, but, you know, most kids can start any time after five years old. And we have uh, people out here that have jumped the hills uh, in their 70s, so any age. So as an adult, if you want to try it, we've got plenty of adults that have come out and started on the small hills to see what it's like and advanced up. Can you talk a little can you tell us the names of who is here and the age and the credentials? Uh, right now, um, we've got Hunter Smith. He is uh, he's 16 now, Casey? Hey, yeah, 16. Uh, he's been jumping, I believe, since he was five. Um, he's an up-and-coming uh, jumper for Norgi in the, the Midwest. He's doing a nice job. Uh, we have, who's our other jumper? Oh, Lucas Nichols uh, is also jumping. He's got a uh, jumping family, all five kids, I think, uh, jump here. And Lucas is the oldest and most advanced in his family, so he's doing a nice job out here today. Um, my son would be jumping, but he left his skis in Park City, Utah that, uh, this weekend, so <laughs> we just figured that one out. Uh, ben Kaiser is also one of the advanced guys out here. Uh, and then uh, Casey Larson is on the national team. He's doing a fantastic job this year, and it's Sarah and his uh, sister, uh, uh, Sarah Larson. Yeah. Kara. <laughs> Can you talk about the, uh, the Olympic process? Yeah, I think you'd be good at that, Casey. Why don't you kind of explain the whole Olympic trials and 
Yeah, so for qualifying for the Olympics, which is, I mean, a lot of our goals in the sport, definitely it's, a, it's one of the oldest and most original Olympic sports. So um, that is definitely the goal for a lot of us. And to kind of get there, it's, it definitely starts at a young age. You know, you have that dream, and that's definitely something you want to do. But you got to go through a lot of international competitions and, and training. So it'll start, like, at smaller international competitions called Fist Cups. And then you got to get points in, in top 30s and, and do really well in those. Then you can move up, and then you finally get to a World Cup after a couple tiers of competition. And once you get to a World Cup, that's when you can start making the attempt to qualify for the Olympics. So the main goal in World Cup is to get a top 30. And when you get a top 30, that means you can go to the Olympics and you've kind of qualified for your country. But then, like in a lot of sports, there's a lot of good really, really advanced people. So there's going to be several kids or, or jumpers on the U.S. team with World Cup points. So then after that, you got to go through the Olympic trials. Like you see, like the swimming trials or the skiing trials, like like anything, you got to be the top four in your country. So that, that happens through a uh, through a competition, and then that kind of decides the Olympic team. But yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a really cool sport, and I think you that it... On this year's- upcoming Olympic team from Norgi? Um, well, right now, from Norgi, we have a lot of really, really good jumpers. Right now, three of three jumpers from Norgi are on the national team, that being Mike Glasner from Cary, Kevin Bickner from Wakanda, and myself from Barrington. So we all kind of live in the area, and we've, we grew up here training. And now a lot of us have kind of moved on to the, uh, to the national team in terms of, and that means we, we train a lot in Europe and in Park City. Now, uh, Kevin and, and Mike have all graduated from high school and college, and they are kind of jumping and making that their lifestyle. But I still have to, I still train here and, and go to school at Brankton High School, so I, I'm here a lot of the time too. But we are three of the one. I, I'd say three of some of the top jumpers in the country right now. Kevin being getting second at nationals this year in Park City, Utah. Mike getting fourth, and myself getting third. So I think it's really cool to see Chicago this more of a Midwestern town, have such a stronger representation of a winter sport, which is kind of interesting. And, yeah, it's pretty cool to, to have teammates from, from your club and, and know your town that, that you can train with all the time. Yeah, yeah thank you. But yeah, it's definitely a really cool sport. Um, I think it's been a big part of my, my uh, childhood growing up. I mean, I started when I was six years old, and I've kind of loved it ever since. Um, it's something that, that I've learned a lot from and, and whether that be, you know, kind of the, fit, the, the, the down points in your career and the up and that, and the high points, definitely. I mean, working hard and, and is definitely an attribute I've learned from this sport. And I think anybody can, it's definitely a, it's actually a safe sport, which many kind of find shocking too. Uh, it's interesting to think that, that this is the second safest winter sport other than cross country skiing in the Olympics. So that's, that's kind of fun to think about. So don't be afraid to bring your kids out to learn how to ski jump at Norgi. Um, something that they'll, that they'll uh, even if they don't go to the highest level of the sport, they'll, they'll remember forever. Now I'm going to pass it off to my sister, Kara, who's on the women's team. So she knows a little bit more about that side because girls can ski jump too. They are just as good as the guys. So I'll let her talk about her experiences a little bit and how she loves the sport. Hi, my name is Kara. I am his brother. And I've been ski jumping since I was five years old. And like any young sister, I wanted to be just like my older brother. So I grabbed a pair of skis right after him and started jumping. And I just really have followed this sport because it's such an awesome community to be a part of. And you get to know and experience so many different things, like traveling off to Europe, which I did for my first time this winter, I got to compete in World Junior Championships, which was a crazy experience, and that was hosted in Romania, and I got to be with some of the best girls in the world at that time, and it was a really great step for me, and hopefully I will be competing in more things like that, being on the national team now, and um, yeah. Here, the oldest, like, right now? Well, we had um, a jumper. His name was Jackson, I'm pretty sure. He was 
in his 60s, 70s. I couldn't tell you exactly how old he was, but he came out here and he jumped our five meter and moved up all the way to the 25. So that was really cool to see. And now he is a big part of our board. He's a member. And um, Mike, Mike, or Michael Glasner, who's still on the team, uh, is his mid 20s, and he's still competing for a spot on the Olympics. So, um, you know, late teens, early 20s is a kind of a key uh, age for these guys. Can you talk about the events that you have yeah. here and why, why people like to come to Norway? If, if you've never seen this live, it's an experience. It is so much better to see it live than you, what you would see on TV. It's a different perspective. You don't realize how big the hill is and how fast these guys are moving until you see it live here. And Norgi, uh, the way it's situated, it's, it's unique. When you come out here, we've got two events during the year uh, to come out and watch the kids uh, do their ski jumping. One is in September this year, end of September, and end of January. And both of them will bring in uh, the best skiers around the country. And what's neat about it is you're going to be right in the midst of things Watch him jump here. Uh, as they jump, you're going to be down on the ground, and they're going to be landing right near you. And as they come off the hill, they'll walk right by you. You can say hi to them, get an autograph, shake their hand, congratulate them. It's kind of neat to see these Olympic hopefuls up front and personal uh, right where they're uh, ski jumping. They're not behind the fence. They're not in a different uh, area. They're right there with you. We got another jumper. So one of the nice things about Norgi is it's kind of a, a family experience. A lot of people come out here um, to enjoy it. Uh, they spend the day out here. Uh, a lot of adults will do some tailgating in the parking lot and enjoy the time out, the, out here with their friends and then uh, come and watch the ski jumpers do their thing. Uh, it's one of the few places around here you can see that competitiveness or that level of, you know, uh, sport up close and personal. And when are the events? Uh, last week of September, I believe. Scott, when's this, uh, September? 24th and 25th of September. Uh, both of them are great. The nice thing about the September one is it's warm. Uh, January is... Scott, when's uh, the January tournament? Yeah, weekend of the 18th. We have to check that, but we'll have that on our website. Which is... Um, what is our website? <laughs> <laughs> is it Norgie Ski Club? I think it is, but just Google Norgi. Yeah, Norgi Ski Club sounds good. Uh, if you can't find it, just Google it, and uh, I'm sure you'll find your spot there. Yep, Boxer Grove. 21st and 22nd of January is the tournament, which is, that's a fun one. Uh, that's a big one. We get thousands of people out here. We've been to a lot of tournaments around the country, and Norgi by far brings out more people and spectators uh, at their competitions than anyone else, even the national competition. We have a lot of people that come out here, which is great to have these guys supporting uh, all the athletes. And you, you never know. You might get interested in jumping. That's uh, how my son got interested. Uh, we came out and watched one of the tournaments, and he fell in love with it right away, and we signed him up, and he's doing good. So you never know. Might fall in love. All right, Casey, why don't you show them or talk about points? Points. Yeah, uh, how they're how they're judged yeah. at different levels. So in a ski jump, obviously you're going for distance. I mean, you're not doing flips or anything like that. Some people think you are, but so you go for the distance. And and on at Norgi, it's a 70 meter. So anything past 70 is considered a really good jump. But you can't go 70 meters and then fall or crash or something like that. You gotta gotta look good doing it. So the at the there's five judges. Uh, judging every single jumper. And then out of those judges, they score out of 20 points, so a perfect jump would get 20 points. And that, that means you look good in the air, you're totally vertical with your skis, par your skis are parallel to your body in the flight, your hands are in, and then you land with one foot in, the, in front of the other, and that's called a telemark landing. And if you do all that, you're going to get 20 points. Um, but then if you fall, that means all the points from your landing go away, so that means you're down to a, an 11 or a 12 out of 20, and that's kind of the, the, the goal of the ski jump is to look good going really far, and, and a lot of jumpers get really good at that, and that's kind of, you know, the point. Yeah. All right, so this is Lucas Nichols. He's a youngster. 
Lucas, uh, how old are you? Uh, 14, almost 15. Almost 15. So what year are you in high school? I'm going to be a sophomore. And where do you go? Barrington High School. Cool, me too. <laughs> but yeah, <that's laughs> so why why do you like ski jumping, to put you on the spot? I don't. It's fun. You get to fly through the air. That's what I would say too, yeah. Now, now, are you – talk about – can you talk a little bit, because that's what we're talking about right now, the telemark landing and, and kind of what the point is? So the telemark landing originated from, like, when people first started ski jumping, there was no high boot. It was only, like, a shoe. And so if they landed, they'd fall back. So they have to land with one foot in front of the other so they'd be more balanced so they wouldn't fall backwards. And, and, and now is it kind of like just – for the for the aspect of doing it, just kind of prove that you're you're capable of doing it. Like if because you don't because you have high boots now, so yeah. so why do you still have to do it? It just gets you more style points and you look like more a better ski jumper. It makes makes you look more advanced, I guess. Move. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, thanks, Lucas. That was sweet. Good job. How, hold on, we're not done yet. How'd you like your jump? It was okay. All right. That's all right. Sweet. <laughs> have one, right? <laughs> We're probably going to have time to do a jump one more time, so we're going to actually go up with them. All right, cool. Good. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You follow us here. You want to watch me? You want to watch me? <laughs> Which one am I going? What? On the center. So, one of the tough things about ski jumping is uh, coaches a lot of times uh, try to the golf. There's so much intricate aspects of the, of the jump. You're not just jumping off a ledge that it takes years to master. And little nuances go a long way. Uh, if you were to compare this to, say, practicing a soccer skill, ski jumping is tough because if you were to practice Kicking a ball in the upper right hand corner off the penalty kick in practice, compared to ski jumping, you might only get you know, maybe six, seven tries during practice, but between those shots, you got to wait 15 minutes for the coach to tell you what to do and improve, and wait another 15 minutes to wait your turn before you can take another kick. In soccer, you don't have to wait that long. You can take 50 shots at the goal pretty quick and do, you know, work on your work on your skill. Ski jumping that, you know, stretches out a lot. Are you too fast for that? A little bit. They jump a 90 and a 120. So almost double the size of the cell. And that's what's going to be going to jump it off of in the 120 during the Olympics. And they're flying. I mean, they're, they're literally flying, both in speed and the distance when they go through the air. 20 other things that makes Norris nice is we have a nice cell. A lot of people like to come to this hill and jump our 70 because it's got a nice curvature, good landing. So a lot of people like to come out here during tournaments and jump our hills. Right. 
perspective of the skier, you gotta fully appreciate the previous shot here. Looking from the top and facing down. And you gotta remember that these guys, when they take off from the bar, they're gonna lean forward into the hill so they can get maximum speed. They're not sitting upright, they're not sitting back, they're leaning forward into the hill. That's a kind of a, a mental game that we have to overcome. But most of these guys, when they their turn to jump on a 70 meter hill for the first time, they're chomping at the bit. Uh, they can practice and so on. Now, the 45 and smaller hills that when the coach says, all right, you're good to go, this is what they've been waiting for. So they have that opportunity to jump on a 70 meter hill. Uh, these guys are, are ready to do it. So one of the things you'll see up here is we have different starting gates. Jumpers to start from, and these starting gates kind of represent your your ability or your skill level. Uh, most people look at it and go, "God, the guy, the guy starting at the top gate, and the very top one here, uh, you know, he's probably the best jumper." And typically, uh, the better you are, the lower on the gate you want to actually start. And that becomes critical because when it comes to the tournament. Whoever that best jumper is will start at that his lowest gate, which means everyone else is at a disadvantage now because they're used to starting at a higher gate, and now they have to start at a lower gate where he's at, and they need to do that because the best jumper, if you were to start at the higher gates, he would out jump the hill, which makes it a dangerous situation. So everyone starts at the lowest gate of the best competitor. So you're always all these these guys are always working on their form so they can uh, move down a gate and kind of close the gap as much as possible. Okay, who's going first here? It's always a little sketchy to try to get out on this bar and not get your feet tangled up. Always checking the bindings to make sure they're all intact. One thing you don't want to have happen is you take off from the end, end of the ramp here and uh, lose the tip and lose the ski from doing that. I've actually seen a guy corkscrew in the air from uh, losing a tip in ski and tumble into the air and actually roll, roll out of it quite, nice, quite nicely. No yep. Yeah. Signals to the coaches. Coach raise them on. Nice speed. So the coach is looking for the best win that they can get. So the guys will stay here, and uh, once the coach waves them on, uh, Hunter will call them out and say that he's ready. The coach will make sure the wind is good, uh, flag him when he's ready. Uh, trying to get the best air possible. Cut. Yeah. Nice and low in his inner run. Looking for that V to catch air. His knees, hands are close to his body, which is good. Uh, on, a, on a good day, they want the wind coming up towards the hill. They want that uh, headwind so that it kind of pushes on the skis and keeps them in the air. The jumpers always talk about having that, uh, that feeling of pushing from the air. So they, they want that feeling and that's what they're always searching for. Tailwind, because it does just the opposite. It kind of deadens the, the jump and drops it uh, off the jump uh, a little quicker than they like. So from the top of the hill here, a little foggy today, but you can actually see Chicago on uh, the skyline in the distance here. You can see the jump as you come around the bend of the river, the Fox River. Uh, a lot of people see the structure, but no one ever gets, comes up here. Uh, during the summer here, we've got guys jumping uh, in the morning.
rookie talking a little bit? Do they answer any questions that they come in? Or, um. well, we just replaced uh, the tracks this year, this summer. Um, these are steel tracks. Uh, they were ceramic. Uh, they've got kind of these uh, bumps on it to separate the ski from the plates so it creates less friction and it slides faster. Uh, the track is hosed down, keep it slick, same as the landing hill. Um, it behaves the same way during the winter. During the winter, we'll, this will be packed down in snow, we'll cut new tracks in the snow, ice them down in ice and icy, uh, chill. Uh, they'll actually pick up more speed doing you know, in the snow than they will on these tracks. You guys really like the snow uh, much more. Landing hill is kind of made up of a, uh, almost like a broom bristle, uh, plastic broom bristles. And they all face the same direction. They're laid out kind of like you would lay out shingles on a roof. And those are the same way they go down and slide up. All the snow up here uh, when we don't have enough during the winter where we have to bag and carry it up. Uh, so they, parents do a great job. Um, we've got a great facility and we got great coaches. I want to talk a little bit about what we're looking at from the view up here. Not very many people get to see this view. Uh, we are at the top of the 70, looking down from where the jumpers will take off. Uh, we're looking. Uh, West? No. That's north. We're looking east. Okay. We're looking east uh, towards the Box River, which is a nice view. Um, you see the Chicago and the, sky, and the skyline, so right here, maybe. been up here, uh, just like the camera crew, uh, the first time they're up here, it's a little nerve-wracking because you can feel the structure moving. When there's a uh, gust of wind or people, people are walking up here, you, you actually feel it bounce. Uh, so it's kind of a, a strange sensation. So right now the guys are last minute instructions from the coach, uh, what they need to work on, what they did well at on their last jump, and what they them to work on. Like I said, it's, this is tough. It's not like kicking a soccer ball 50 times right in a row and trying to perfect that skill. It's about a half hour between each, you know, each jump, and you got to remember what you did. I'm going to grab the microphone from you. We're about to go off of our live video. It's been about a half hour. Um, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us and watching us spend our day at the Nordic Ski Club here in Fox River Grove. Um, if you need more information about the events that take place here, you can visit our website at visitmchenrycounty.com. Um, and again, thanks to Illinois and Georama for their participation in this. JoyIllinois.com has great information, and you can watch this video again, as well as um, check out NordeastSkiClub.com. Thanks so much. Well, learn to fly. <laughs>